Hi guys, I'm Mark Walker, welcome back to Switch Up. We're going to take a look at The Outer Worlds, which I've been really lucky to play for the last few days. Some of you will know that I love the Fallout series, and in fact I started a petition to send over to Bethesda to bring over the Fallout 3 and New Vegas games to the Nintendo Switch. In the meantime though, while we wait for them to, uh, well make it happen. Having a game come to the Nintendo Switch, which is created by many of the minds who bought us New Vegas, which is arguably the best in the Fallout series. Oh, let the comments begin. It can't be a bad thing. And in all honesty, if this was called Fallout, the Outer Worlds, I don't think people would actually bat an eyelid. There are so many similarities here. Let's go over the performance, frame rates, the different options in terms of controls, as well as the port on the whole. Port hole. <laughs> I'll also share my brief impressions at the end of the video, but we'll have a full review of this one out today as well. Is it on terra firma? Well, let's find out. Full disclaimer, this is version 1.01 of the game, and I fully expect that when the game launches proper, there'll be a day one patch, but I can't confirm that, and I also can't really at this point see the ins and outs of that, other than to say that it's supposed to work on texture resolution and overall performance, which are two areas we're definitely going to talk about in this one. I'll make a video on it once it's out. Now in terms of the audio options, you'll have all the basics, being able to change the percentages of each different area, choose the different language, and there's a good amount of options to adjust where you see subtitles, which is a nice little touch. In the control options, obviously you can change your rumble, but it is nice to see we can invert the X and Y axis. I know lots of players can't play these first person games without having that option. And also it's good to see that they've split the sensitivity so you can change the X and Y sensitivities independent of each other, as well as toggling on and off the aim assist. They've integrated their own button layout and button mapping, which is nice if you want to use that. But the one that I've been waiting for, and someone pointed it out on Twitter, is the motion aiming or gyroscopic control. And as we've seen, there are actually several different ways of doing this. Some companies allow you the ability to just use gyro when you're aiming down the sights so that you can get those fine headshots, while others have it all the time. The Outer Worlds, well, they've kind of set the benchmark here by allowing you to toggle between aiming only, so when you're holding the trigger down, or having gyro available all the time. That's just such a good idea that they've put that in there. And again, you can invert the motion X and Y axis and the independent sensitivities. Thank you very much. Other options include the ability to show your helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. And your companion's helmets as well, if you would like to do such a thing. If not, you can keep them hidden. I suggest keeping those helmets hidden. Another option that's so welcome, and again, we so rarely see it on the Nintendo Switch, but it's almost like this developer have sat down in a forum of requests and gone, yep, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. It's the text size. You can change the text size so that when you are in handheld, if you have eyesight like mine, you can put this all the way up to increase the overlay text on everything. It's such a small tweak, but actually it's quite difficult to implement well without everything just merging together into one big mess. And it works well here. I found it particularly useful for handheld play. You can enable or disable the tutorials and notifications, toggle on or off the DPS. One nice thing, and this is a bit of a tip here, there's an option that says show base item stats. Now by default, when you look at the different stats on an item, they'll all look the same. So say you have six different types of pistol that look the same. When this is selected, all the DPS looks the same. But if you turn this off, will show it based on your level. So six different pistols might have six different DPSs. I don't really know why that's not the default. And it was actually another video where I saw that and thought, yeah, I'm gonna stick that in, that's really useful. So switch that off and you'll have a much better idea of what weapons are actually doing more damage. Now in terms of the difficulty, you have story mode, which as in most games, just reduces everything down to a nice casual experience where you can just enjoy the story. You've got normal mode, everything's standard, hard mode, well, obviously slightly harder. But the most interesting mode here for me and the one that's gonna mean a good bit of replayability is the supernova mode. This looks very cool. Basically, you're stuck on Supernova. If you reduce it down to an easier difficulty, which you can do, you can never go back. So it really is a challenge for veteran players. Enemies have more health, you've got to eat and drink to stay alive. Companions die permanently. Crippled body and limb conditions can only be healed by resting in a bed. It's basically the survival mode of the game and it looks so much fun. But for the purposes of re review, uh, 
are stuck to normal. As far as options goes, that's pretty much it. It's quite extensive actually, and they've, in my opinion, really nailed the options. Now it's time to look at the performance. In terms of the frame rate, the game is targeting 30 FPS locked out, and for the most part in the open areas, it's doing quite a good job of maintaining this. If you look at the line though, you'll see little blips every now and then. And when you're playing the game, those represent sometimes small stutters or just a feeling that those frames aren't being produced at a consistent rate. And we call that the frame pacing. And here there are definitely some frame pacing issues, particularly in some areas like the town. And not only the pacing in town, it also really struggles to maintain that 30. And as soon as it dips, you can kind of feel it grinding its gears a bit. It's not terrible, but in town, at least, there's some drops that need to be ironed out. Another thing to notice is that during combat, special effects, so weapon effects and weapon flash, can cause some dips in performance. The real difficulty for me is that I really enjoy gyroscopic controls, as you probably know. And unfortunately, when performance drops when you're using gyro, it has a big impact on your ability to aim. It's fine for the most part, but when it just inconsistently drops, there'll be a couple of times that will be a touch more frustrating. Now, thankfully, unlike the other game we reviewed the other day, you can have gyro and auto aiming at the same time. This allows you to quite easily track headshots and things and takes away some of that frustration. Let's look at the image quality then. And as I'm sure you've seen already from the footage, it's a good and bad picture. It's a bit of a mixed bag, this one. Again, it's my understanding that the developers were going for a native resolution. They seem to have achieved it. I can't be entirely sure all the time. Perhaps a touch of dynamic, but I can't be sure. It might actually be locked out. Now, with that said, the sacrifice that they've made so far, well, pre-patch, is the texture resolution, as well as the level of detail draw distance. The textures in the outer areas sometimes are just bad they really are there's no two ways about it to my eye some of the textures are just poor now the game has a stylized look to it so it kind of gets away with that to some degree but there are some areas where you look at it and think wow okay <laughs> that's uh that's a low res texture right there whereas there are other areas like inside the power plant where the mixture of different colors and contrasts as well as the multitude of surfaces and some of them actually with semi-decent textures, it can look really, really nice. If you're at all familiar with the developers behind these games, then you'll know that one of the big issues of the Fallout series are the character models. And uh, yeah, I think <laughs> this definitely comes from the Fallout series of character model design. Some of them look amazing, like your first female companion. She looks great, but then others look like their heads are made of melted plasticine and there's a stick somewhere keeping them upright. It's all part of the charm, to be honest. It's all part and parcel and it's in no way a negative, it's more just an observation. Now, as I mentioned, the level of detail has been brought right in. So as you're moving about the world, you will see things materializing into the game. And I really mean materializing, it's like they're beaming in. But generally, this is only when you spin around quickly. I'm thinking they're using some kind of techniques whereby things behind you unload and then things in front are more clear. And the draw distance itself, so the, the foliage range, it's not half bad, it's actually pretty decent. What you will see in the far distance are shadows gradually growing on items. But again, it's far enough into the distance that yeah, there are only a few times when it's kind of jarring. What is good is the anti-aliasing. That's the ability for the game to remove the jaggy edges from the outsides of objects. For the most part, I was really impressed and didn't see many of these rougher edges on objects, characters and items in the world. And things like reflection quality are a touch lower. There are particles here in the air, which is nice. What the game really needs though, is that hopefully day one patch to improve texture resolution as with just a tiny little tweak, just a, just a smidgen more texture res and we'll be laughing. When in handheld, again, you're gonna notice those drop textures, but it feels good in handheld and I've enjoyed playing it in this mode, but that blurriness, you need to know about it. Now I can't show you because obviously in these high performance, and I use that in air quotes, games, they very often remove the video capture feature. And when you record it on a camera, it just doesn't translate. But it's a touch blurry and handheld, but more than playable and by far not the worst we've seen. Some of the load times are quite long. They're not the longest we've seen on Switch, but they're noticeable, especially if they're areas that you kind of travel to quite a lot. We're looking at a roundabout, well I say a roundabout, we're looking at exactly 34 seconds when you transition from the city to the main area, but when you go back it can be up to a minute. Okay, so let's summarize performance then. Overall we've got a semi-decent resolution, a good frame rate that suffers from frame pacing issues, so they do need to 
tweak that slightly. Gyro controls, which is incredible. We can change all the axis again, which is perfect. There's some janky level of detail stuff going on here, but the real and only main issue for me is the texture resolution being so low. But by all accounts, it looks like something they're aware of and are hoping to patch very early on. With that being said, I feel like I'm playing Fallout and that is awesome. So I'm going to give my impressions of the game so far, but do keep your eye out for my full review. Well, my impressions so far are, uh, I feel like I'm playing Fallout. You can very much tell that this is from the guys that designed and worked on some of those titles. Even down for, to your character name being The Stranger was linking me back to The Mysterious Stranger from Fallout. There'll be numerous dialogue options. And if you remember that opening section of Fallout 3, where you had to make the decision between the fate of the entire town that you first come to, there's a very similar decision at the start of this game. Essentially what I'm saying is if you're a fan of those games then I believe you will enjoy this one. Don't go in expecting Fallout. It's a touch different in certain areas but there's so much the same. I like the ability to design and build your character, choose all the different abilities and skills and then just loot every single thing you find in the world. You'll be reaching into the backs of cars to loot, looking under beds, raiding old gas stations, just everything you ever wanted in this type of game. If you're a bit of a loot hound like myself is here until you get encumbered and then can't fast travel but there's a perk to negate that so that's nice aiming with the gyro yeah, it needs a bit of work but it's good and i'm glad it's here and i do like the slowdown mechanic which essentially replaces vats but again i'll talk more about that in the full review it's another nice game to have on the nintendo switch and not being the title that i'd previously played before it's lovely for me this is one of those moments where i get to actually properly enjoy a new experience and a whole new world <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that sentence without hearing that song, can you? Cheers, guys. Do stick around for the full review. I don't know when that's going to drop, but yeah, stick around for it. And let me know down in the comments if you're going to be picking this one up. If, like me, you're a Fallout fan and wanted some new Vegasy type action, or if the texture resolution and other things I've spoken about are going to put you off. They, they shouldn't, really, but they might. You know what's coming next? If you enjoyed the channel, then please do consider sticking around. A big thanks to all our patrons. We've had so many new ones. It's crazy. Really awesome. Thank you so much. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.